Hey guys, in this video, we'll be discussing basics of shell scripting and we'll be listing these topics. Hi friends, today we're going to talk about command line arguments. In every programming language, we pass parameters to a function. So in shell programming, command line arguments is a similar concept. We need command line arguments for the following reasons. It tells the command which option to use. It also informs the command which file or group of files to process. Operations such as reading and writing can be done in files. There are two types of command line arguments. You can either have single or multiple command line arguments. Let us understand this to an example. In the first example, one argument is passed to the program. In the second example, n number of arguments is passed to the program. This command rm deletes the file. So let us understand how we can refer uh, the files in the program. $0 is used to refer to the command. $1, $2, so on to $n are used to refer to the positions of the parameters. Let us understand this using a example program. So you already saved the file. You are going to open it using gedit. The name of the file is a and sh is used to represent the shell program. So basically in the program there are four echo statements and uh, they display the uh, arguments which are passed during the runtime $1, $2 and $3. Any argument which exceeds 9 has to be uh, represented using uh, flower brackets. So we save the program, we go to the terminal and we execute the program sh file name dot sh. So type the arguments you want to pass Sunday, Monday and so the output is the arguments which we passed in, uh, during the runtime. The first and the second argument is displayed, but the third and the twelfth argument is not displayed because we, we have not passed it during runtime. So now let us go on to the next topic. Uh, let us see the various arithmetic operations in shell. So now let us understand this with a simple program. So let us create a new program, gedit program name dot sh ok so in this program let us accept two numbers from the user now let us perform the operations addition To perform the addition operations, we use escape sequence followed by the expr keyword. To access the value of the variables, we use a dollar symbol before the variables. And to make sure there is enough space between the operators and the operands, let us close this by escape sequence. Let us perform the other operations, subtraction, subtraction, multiplication and division the same way. Only the operators uh, op the operators for the multiplication changes. We use a backslash and a star for a multiplication. Now let us save this file. Let us go back to the terminal and execute this. sh file name dot sh Let us enter two numbers 4 and 2 Addition is 6, difference of 4 and 2 is 2, product of 4 and 2 is 8, division of 4 and 2 is 2. So, in shell scripting, spacing is very important. You have to make sure there is proper spacing between the operators and the oper operands, failing which will lead to segmentation faults, runtime errors and couple time errors. So now, let us go on to the next topic, exist status in a shell script. So, for every program in shell scripting, it is very important to know the exist status of a shell script. If the exist status of a shell script is zero, that means the program has been successfully executed. 
If the exit status is any value other than 0, it means the program has been failed. So now let us take an example. So the first line we change the directory to some underscore directory and the second line we remove all the files in some underscore directory. So now let us consider a situation where some underscore directory does not exist. Then the command cd dollar some underscore directory will fail and the directory will not be changed. Then all the files in the current working directory will be deleted. To check the exit status of a shell script we use the environment variable dollar question mark. Now let us consider the code to check the exit status of this command. So first we change the directory to some underscore directory. Then we check the exit status of the command. If dollar question mark is equal to zero, then we remove all the files in the in the work in the directory. Otherwise, we display the error message and we exit to the terminal. Now let us consider a simple command. So, so now first let us clear the screen. Let us consider a simple command CAL. This is a calendar command which displays the calendar. So now let us check the exit status of it. Echo dollar question mark. The exit status is zero, showing that the command has been successfully executed. Now let us consider some other command like CALL. This shows a lot of errors because it's an invalid command. Let us check the exit status. The exit status is 127 which is some other value other than 0 which shows that this command is failed and it is not valid. So exit status of a command is very helpful in debugging. It helps us to detect errors easily. It makes the program less error prone. It also makes it very efficient. So let us see our next topic which is decision control structures in shell. So basically decision control structure, structure in shell is fundamental control statements that allow shell to make decisions and execute statements conditionally. So let us see day to day life examples. When I watch a movie I like to eat popcorn. If I am not in the mood to study I will go to sleep. So here the words I watch a movie and I am not in the mood to study are conditions based on which decisions are taken. This similar concept is implemented in shell. So different types of decision control structures are simple if statement, if then else statement, if then elf if I statement, case esac statement. So let us see them one by one. First is simple if statement. So first the expression is evaluated. If it turns to be true, the statements are executed. Otherwise we come out of the loop. So here we use comparison operators like greater than, less than, equal to, etc. So let us go on to the next one. If else if I statement. So this is the next form of control statement where shell allows us to execute statements in a more controlled way and we can make decision between two choices. So first the expression is evaluated. If it is true, statement 1 is executed. Otherwise, statement 2 is executed. Let us go on to the next structure. If LF FI statement. So this, this is one level advanced form of control statement which allows shell to make correct decisions out of several conditions. There is nothing special about this code. This is just a series of if statements where each if is part of else clause of previous statements. So here first the expression is evaluated. If it is true the corresponding statements are executed. Otherwise a series of else if statements are evaluated. If none of them are true then the statement in the else block is evaluated and we come out of the loop. So let us see an example. So here the two variables a and b. So first we compare them if the equal uh, we we have a display statement telling that both are equal. Then we check if they are greater than in the else if statement. Then accordingly we have a display statement telling that A is greater than B. Then we, another, we have another else if statement to check if, they le if A is less than B. And accordingly we have a display statement. If none of these conditions are satisfied, we have a else statement. 
we are going to the next structure case is act statement so this handles multi wave branching where every condition depends on the value of a single variable it is more efficient than repeated l if else so here the word is matched with every pattern available so if it matches with the pattern corresponding statements are executed other way otherwise the statement in the default block are executed example we have a fruit called kiwi so here we compare that fruit with uh, with the available patterns apple and banana and kiwi so whichever matches accordingly we have the echo statement so here kiwi matches with kiwi and the echo statement will be new zealand is famous for kiwi so the next topic is loop control structures so loop control structure is basically a powerful programming tool that enables you to execute a set of commands repeatedly so basically so basically a set of uh, commands is evaluated and accordingly statements are executed the different loop structures in shell are while loop until loop select loop and for loop the first one is while loop so in while loop it enables you to execute a set of commands repeatedly until some condition occurs it is usually used when you need to manipulate the value of a variable repeatedly while loop is a empty control loop so first the condition is evaluated and then the statements in the body are executed so first the command is evaluated uh, in the uh, yeah first the command is evaluated and after that the statements which follow are executed if the command fails and then we come out of the while loop let us take a simple example your count is initialized to 1 so while the value of count is less than or equal to 3 Uh, the value of count is displayed and uh, the and count is incremented so the output is 1 2 and 3 when the value of count becomes 4 the condition fails and we come out of the while loop the next loop is until loop until loop is negation of while loop so until a command is false set of statements will be executed let us take an example so your a is 0 so until negation of dollar a less than 10 the value of dollar a will be printed and uh, the value of a will be incremented so once the value of a becomes 10 10 less than 10 is uh, evaluates to false so the negation is true so therefore the loop will not be executed because it is true the output is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 the next loop is select loop So it provides an easy way to create a numbered menu from which users can select options. So basically, select loop is a combination of for and switch statements. So it's helpful if user wants to choose one or more items from a list of choices, where word one, word two, up to word and a list of choices separated by spaces. Let us take an example. So select drink in tea, coffee, water, juice, a, a p. So drink is a variable. the variable is evaluated in a case statement and accordingly um, display messages so the next loop is for loop so here for loop is a finite loop it repeats a set of commands for every item in a list so for every value of word that is word 1 word 2 etc set of statements will be executed now let us take a simple example of for loop let us take a simple chess program So chess has eight rows and eight columns. So we run a I loop to denote the eight rows and the J loop to denote the J uh, eight columns. So basically, if the sum of the row number and the column number is even, then we apply white color background. Otherwise, we apply black color back background. So slash zero three three forty seven M is a code for white color and slash zero three three four zero M is is a code for black color. By default, we appear uh, we apply a black color background. For everything, so this is how a chessboard is so uh, displayed. Let us save. Sh chess dot sh, and the chessboard is displayed. now after this loop control structure in unix we have something called set statements 
which can which makes it possible to convert script argument into positional parameter so let's take an example to understand the set command set and some number of arguments like 95 65 45 and so to display the arguments we can write echo and uh, depending on the num position of the argument we write a uh, dollar one so it displays the first argument of the set command so uh, similarly we can write echo dollar two to display the second argument and uh, echo dollar hash can be used to display the number of arguments which is three now we have one more command called the dollar star which can which gives us uh, the which displays the all the arguments on the terminal now we also have another statement called shift statement which can be used to change the position of the parameter in the command line argument. It can be used to shift the command line argument to the left side. So let's understand this with an example. Shift 2. So this statement will shift the, number, uh, shift the argument of set statement uh, to the left by two positions. So... To, to see the actual arguments of uh, which is present now, we can have the command echo dollar star. So now we have only 54 in our argument list. That is the 95.56.54 is shifted left shifted to left by two positions. Um, so this is all about the basics of shell scripting. Hope you find this video useful and helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching the video.